How you doing, whole factories? DJ Mike Moon. Today, it, the artist is Africa Bambada. If you want to know anything about Afrofuturism and African diaspora, this is the artist to check out. It goes from back from Funkadelic to Parliament, all the way to the Black Panther movie. Uh, give it a give it a shout, give it a check, and here you go. This is something special for you. Hey Salem, so excited to have you here again with us. Hope Factory Teenagers, hope you're doing well. We are continuing our uh, series on difficult questions, difficult topics, of course, and we're talking about race and religion. I have a special guest with us today. I have Ana Castellanos. You did it, yeah, did it. that's me. <laughs> What's up, guys? Yes, uh, she's a great friend of mine. We go biking during the summer here in the city, but she uh, comes from a long legacy of being, being involved in church and being involved in urban planning and being involved in Chicago. Yeah. And so I want to zoom in and ask some questions surrounding, of course, as you can tell, I mean, you can see hopefully uh, you're like, Latino, is that okay? Can I say that? Sure, yeah. Okay, you're Latino. I'm the descendants of Mexican immigrants, yes. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And uh, of course, with that going on in our country right now, race, religion, you have uh, kids in cages on the border, you had mm. uh, Donald Trump, our, our uh, current president who's being impeached, mm. uh, who might be out by the time we put this video up, um, out of office. <laughs> but speaking and saying that people crossing the borders were these uh, criminals, amongst other things that I don't think I should say on uh, the camera, uh, and really talking bad about Mexican uh, immigrants coming over. Um, of course, uh, Chicago has a huge amount of Latino community in it, um, and we suffer black, black and brown together right. uh, from the disparities, from the issues yeah. of, of, of racism and, and discrimination. Uh, as far as policy, urban planning, all those things. Mm. Um, of course, my kids are South Side Chicago based. Uh, yes. South Side of Chicago is we got a beautiful ba place. Yes, beautiful place. Um, in that they might go to schools and, and, and hear things in the news about their school not being funded well, mm. hear things about um, maybe certain communities are hoods and ghettos, right. or might have had a history of housing projects. Right. Um, speak to those, speak to that just a little bit. Define yeah. some of that and encourage uh, them as far as what they hear. Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, an interesting thing that you brought up is that a lot of times the south side of Chicago, much like uh, Latinos, we're all lumped into one big group, right? Mm -hmm. We both know that uh, on the south side of Chicago, there are some 20 odd neighborhoods that mm -hmm. make up the south side of Chicago, mm -hmm. all with a slightly different feel, uh, a slightly different look, slightly different commercial corridors mm -hmm. uh, that bring that neighborhood such vibrancy mm -hmm. and life. And those are things to be proud of, right? To, mm -hmm. to take ownership of, to uh, take uh, stock in that individuality of what it means to come from that particular place. And it's really hard, especially in urban planning, when there's such a strong narrative, right? Mm -hmm. Places are dictated by narratives. We, we all know these, some people call them stereotypes or archetypes, mm -hmm. but really mm -hmm. they're just narratives that happen over and over and over again mm -hmm. about the south side of Chicago. It's violent. People across the world uh, living in some remote <laughs> village in uh, Eastern Europe will know, mm -hmm. oh, the south side of Chicago is bad. It's violent, right? Mm -hmm. And how does that narrative spread so far and so wide? Mm -hmm. And what can we do to reverse that narrative? Uh, so I think one of the things is, you know, we can't as hard as it is, we can't be bogged down by the narratives that we hear every day about our own communities. Um, we can't just only focus on what the news, what the media is telling mm -hmm. us about our own communities. We have to really take ownership and stock of, okay, what is it that I love about my community? What is mm -hmm. it that makes my community great? 
What is it that makes my community unique and that there's nothing else like it? And a lot of times that's going to be the people, right? Yeah. The people, the relationships that we have, whether they're formal or informal, the types of economies that we grow and we're proud of, mm -hmm. whether it's supporting the local business that actually has a storefront or the local business of somebody selling something in front of their streets. These are things that black and brown communities have at every corner, right? Yes. Yes, and yes, um, yes. so those are the things that we really have to be proud of, we have to support, mm -hmm. and the things that we have to uplift and share those narratives with other peoples. Yes. To say, no, a uh, Chatham neighborhood doesn't just look like violence, it looks like this is my favorite vendor here, it looks like this is my favorite store here, the library here is amazing. These are the kinds of things that we have to start thinking about to realize really that as individuals, the government doesn't make all the decisions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We as individuals have power to affect change in our own neighborhoods, yes. especially when we organize, especially when we create a space, whether it's you opening up your house for dinner and inviting people around the block, uh, space to have conversations about your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Simply opening up the question, what do I wish were different in my neighborhood? Mm -hmm. And uh, how can we make that happen? Absolutely, absolutely. And you are someone who participates, you live that. Uh, you are the communication director at Urban Strategy, so you think on a high level a lot of times about right. what's going on in our neighborhoods and advocating for Latino, black and brown neighborhoods. But also, uh, you are someone who I know Personally, you advocate uh, for justice issues within black and brown neighborhoods. What did, tell us a little bit about your journey, your story of coming up in church and finding your own voice as uh, a relatively young person now, <laughs> um, actively <That's> right. <laughs> uh, speaking to some of these issues, working against some of the issues that are negative and empowering your community. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think I grew up in a little village community on the west south side of Chicago um, and that is a neighborhood that knows a lot of injustice, uh, faces a lot of oppression. Mm -hmm. So as somebody that, you know, was marginalized maybe but not yeah. oppressed, mm -hmm. I grew up in a privileged household. I got to go to schools, I got to travel, I got to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I have to recognize that part of my privilege. And a lot of that was recognizing that the narrative of Christianity and the narrative of Christ has been whitewashed in this country mm -hmm. so much. And what does that mean for people that are facing oppression every single day? Um, and I think an important question is looking back to the story of Jesus yes. and how did Jesus present himself in this world? Uh, a white Jesus does not exist. A white Jesus is not a real thing. It is a socially constructed tool uh, to manipulate Christianity and weaponize Christianity for the benefit of white privilege and white supremacy. Yes. So what does it mean to reclaim the story of Jesus mm -hmm. uh, and its truth that, you know, Jesus was a refugee. Jesus was facing political persecution. Jesus was not born in the suburbs. He was born in right in the hood in a manger surrounded by a bunch of barn animals. What does that mean for people that live in our communities to, to say, this is a Jesus I can relate to. This is a Jesus that came into this world for someone like me. Mm -hmm. And um, to fight the systems of oppression that that are impacting me in my life. Yes. Um, so my journey was really about recognizing that the white church is not the truth. It's not definitely not the whole truth. And it's not uh, the Jesus that uh, is empowering love and fueling love and mm -hmm. reconciliation in this world. Absolutely. So uh, I think for me, uh, fighting in communities, being a, an advocate for for all people in communities means just taking up that love of Christ, examining myself, examining in what ways am I benefiting from privilege and in what ways uh, does the systems around me work for me? How can I not try and reach for an access into that system, but break that system apart so that it works for everybody? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a great story of how you came to be doing what you're doing. Uh, what are some practical things that maybe some of my teenagers uh, should know about or should do uh, to help speak out um, uh, for empowering their community? Yeah, um, I think recognizing your agency, recognizing that you have power right where you are. Um, and I think forming relationships with other people, 
whether it's uh, young people like yourselves, whether it's getting a mentor, whether it's getting uh, involved in an existing organization in your community, okay. or if that doesn't exist, start one. Get some people together and start one. Um, but I think what's really important for us right now is social capital. Building social capital, mm. that means that we have a relationship, a network of people that's gonna support each other, love each other, help each other, understand each other's perspectives, and if we see something that isn't being done in our communities, we can fight for it together. Absolutely. Social capital. That's good. And Jesus was someone who had great social capital. Absolutely. He was active in doing that. How can people connect uh, with you uh, as we close out? And I really appreciate Hopefully we can have a further and more in-depth conversation soon. Yeah, I would love that. <laughs> uh, you can see me on Instagram, Anna underscore Rose 93. Um, also, if you want to check out Urban Strategies and the work that we're doing across the country, you could check out urbanstrategies.us. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>